Welcome to our worship service here at Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. We are in the second Sunday of Easter, and we will begin our service this morning by singing our opening hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide. That's hymn number 482 in our Lutheran service book, hymn 482. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Father of all mercies and God of all consolation, come to the aid of your people 
turning us from our sin and toward you. Grant your Holy Spirit that we may hear your word, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Let us make confession to God, our Father. Most merciful God, God, I, I, a troubled troubled and penitent penitent sinner, confess confess to you all my sins and iniquities with with which which I have ever offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray for your boundless mercy for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive my my sins. sins. Grant me your Holy Spirit, Spirit, that that I may believe in your forgiveness forgiveness in Christ. Christ. Amend my sinful life and and receive eternal eternal life through through Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives us all our sins. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. O give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Glory be to the Father, and and to to the the Son, and to to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now, and will will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may, by your grace, Confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our service by singing our next hymn, O Sons and Daughters of the King. The first four verses of that hymn, hymn number 470.
Our first reading for today, the second Sunday of Easter, comes from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 29th verse. St. Luke writes, But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care that you are about what what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutius rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, for if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they, when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Jesus is the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue with the gradual, speaking it together. Christ, Christ has, has risen, risen from, from the, the dead. dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion, dominion over, over the, the works, works of his hands. He has put all things under, under his feet. Our epistle reading appointed for today comes from Peter's first letter to the church, first chapter. The apostle writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not now see Him, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, a salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue with the Alleluia and verse. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nail, 
and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Jesus Christ, his His only Son, Son, our Lord, who who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue and sing the remainder of our hymn, O Sons and Daughters of the King, verses 5 through 9. That again is hymn number 470.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In December of 2000, the movie Miss Congeniality was released here in America. Sandra Bullock plays the role of an FBI agent who goes undercover in the Miss America pageant. During the interview portion of that pageant, each of the contestants are asked the same series of questions. And one of the questions they were asked was this. What is the one thing our society needs the most? Over and over, contestant after contestant respond with the answer, world peace. Especially in times of uncertainty or unrest, peace is something people long for. We long for the days when we were a young child and didn't have a care in the world. We played games like hide-and-seek or tag. We climbed trees and scraped our knees and elbows. And in Sunday school, we sang songs, songs like, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. And now that we are grown, we long for peace of a different kind. Perhaps too often, it's been a piece of candy, pizza, or cake. But seriously, we are in search of a different kind of peace in these unsettling times. For some of us, financial peace is what we are looking for in these unsettling times. In our gospel reading for today, the disciples were dealing with unsettling times too. John wrote in verse 19, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. On the evening of that first Easter, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors. They were confused and fearful. After what the Jewish leaders had done to Jesus, and now that His body was missing, they were worried that these same Jews would turn against them as well. They didn't feel safe. Fear rattled their hearts as they hid behind the locked doors. But they couldn't hide from Jesus. He knew exactly where they were hiding, and He knew exactly how they were feeling. Suddenly, Jesus stood among them, and He said to them, Peace be with you. Their friend, their Savior, their Lord was standing right there in front of them in the flesh. He is alive. And just like that, their reasons for fear melted like snow on a warm spring day. Jesus didn't just wish them peace. He proclaimed and gave peace to His formerly fear-filled friends. Only He could give the kind of peace which quieted their souls and strengthened their faith. Because Jesus said, peace be with you, it changed everything. And His resurrection guaranteed that His peace can be trusted. This peace that Jesus gives is also for you. He wants you to know the kind of peace which quiets the soul and removes fear. No matter what you are going through, no matter the changes or challenges you are experiencing in this life, Jesus' resurrection and the peace He gives does not change. When the peace of God enters our hearts, the storms of life are not removed. But the presence of the risen Christ removes our fear of those storms. Remember, God doesn't give you what you can handle. God helps you handle what you've been given. And what He's given you and His disciples is His peace. In our Gospel reading, Jesus said, Peace be with you. 
a second time and then commissioned his disciples to carry on his work. In the 40 days leading up to and including his ascension, Jesus prepared his followers to expand his church. And although he had received a special outpouring of his Holy Spirit on them for Pentecost, he gave them the Holy Spirit here too to sustain them in that mission. As John recorded in verse 22, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent his followers out into the world just as the Father had sent him to bring his salvation. Jesus earned it, and in his resurrection, he assured it. His followers reported and spread his peace. The key to the disciples' mission was the forgiveness of sins. The disciples had received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and with it, Jesus gave them the authority and power to forgive sins. This truth remains at the center of the Christian church today. Jesus won forgiveness for everyone through his death. And yet, many will refuse to repent of their sins and will turn their back on his forgiveness. But some will repent and look for the assurance that they are indeed forgiven. Jesus extended his authority to the church to forgive the sins of those who repent and to withhold it from those who are unrepentant. In Luther's small catechism, this is called the office of the keys. And in there it says, Where is this written? This is what St. John the Evangelist writes in chapter 20. The Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Then the question is asked, What do you believe according to these words? The answer, I believe that when the called ministers of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation and absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better. This is just as valid and certain, even in heaven, as if Christ, our dear Lord, dealt with us himself. And indeed, Christ, our Lord, has dealt with us. He dealt with us and our sin by His atoning sacrifice on the cross. By the shedding of His blood, He has redeemed us. And by His glorious resurrection from the dead, He claimed the victory won for us all. One of those sins He dealt with is doubt. Despite the testimony of the women from the tomb and His fellow disciples, Thomas doubted the validity of their claims. The Bible doesn't tell us why Thomas wasn't there when our Lord appeared to them on that first Easter evening. Perhaps Thomas was in a foul mood because he went out looking for hand sanitizer or toilet paper and found none. Whatever the reason for his absence, Thomas demands proof. John records for us in verse 25 how adamant Thomas was. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will never believe. Thomas doesn't just want visible proof. He wants physical proof. Much like the two Marys from our gospel reading last week, who were able to grab a hold of Jesus' feet. Thomas wants to physically place his hands on him. Then and only then will he believe. We feel shocked at Thomas's skepticism. After all, Jesus had foretold his death and resurrection, and now Thomas' closest friends... And Jesus' closest disciples confirmed the resurrection. But Thomas still wasn't convinced. Thomas' example demonstrates how impossible it is for human beings 
on their own to believe that Jesus truly rose from the dead. But Thomas' insistence on receiving proof created one more instance of proof for us also. A week later, the disciples gathered behind locked doors. This time, Thomas was with them. And once again, Jesus appeared in the midst of them and said, Peace be with you. Then he turned to Thomas and offered the exact proof Thomas required. Go ahead, Jesus invited. Put your finger here on my hands and put your hand on my side. Then he told Thomas, stop doubting and believe. Thomas didn't have to examine further and instantly confessed his faith in our Lord Jesus by saying, my Lord and my God. One more time, for those who think that Jesus did not claim to be God, God's Word is clear. Thomas confessed Jesus as Lord and God and accepted it as truth as all people are invited to believe. Jesus had indulged Thomas' need to see him, but that privilege would only be available to most, would not be available to most people. Jesus would appear to more than 500 after his resurrection. But after his ascension into heaven, only the Apostle Paul, by a special vision, could claim to directly see Jesus. Others, without an opportunity to look on Jesus, would still be called to faith and receive God's blessings in him. They would receive that peace which the world cannot give. Three times in our Gospel reading, Jesus says, Peace be with you. The first time confirming His resurrection to His disciples by showing them His hands and side. And the disciples were overcome with joy. The second time Jesus says, Peace be with you. He gives to His church the office of the keys. That authority to forgive sins in His name. And the third time he says, peace be with you. The Prince of Peace addresses our doubts, like Thomas's, with his word in the Bible. He works faith in us through his word by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus said to his disciples, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, from John 20, verse 29. Faith in our Lord Jesus brings the assurance of everlasting joy and peace. Because God always keeps His promises. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 15, verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. To God alone be all the glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds, in Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace, unto life everlasting. Amen. Hear us, merciful Father, as we pray for ourselves, for the church, for our nation, and for all conditions and manners of people. God of mercy, keep, keep us from doubts and fears that prevent us from knowing the fullness of your word, of your saving peace and gracious presence. Teach us to trust your word and to believe in Christ crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, bestow upon your church your Holy Spirit and all the gifts that come down from on high. Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully and ears to hear your word proclaimed. Give us boldness in our witness before the world and courage to speak your name without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. 
Keep your church from following the winds of change and make her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away with your word and to restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders in the paths of peace and justice. Bless us with wise, faithful, and just leaders who protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all the world from all that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, and to those to whom death draws near. We pray especially for Craig and Sue Kepi, Pat Romsdahl, Don McCabe, Lynn Ring, Mona Ray Morse, Greg Eide, Teresa Driscoll, Heather Mum, Betty Gerald, Jean Enright, Stacy Lorth, Claudia Schrader, and Tracy Tripke. We also pray for Jill, Ray, Mary, and Carmi, Becky, Dennis, Emily, missionaries from Wisconsin, and Ken. For Judy, Lisa, Annie, and Harold, Victoria, Shirley, Irene, Al, Deanna, and Grant, Rako, Renee, Carter, Julian, Peg, Chelsea, Oliver, Maverick, Darlene, and Tom, Dennis, Denise, Pam, Lloyd, and Skip, as well as for Renee, Sloan, Pam, Randy, Michelle, Braden, Cameron, and Amy. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will, and preserve them in faith through eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, be with those who grieve the loss of those whom they love. We think especially for the family of Karen um, Baith, friends of Kim Turnus, and also for Pat Ensrud and her family at the death of Marilyn. Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting life to all who die in Christ. Deliver us from the distractions of things that do not matter, that we may be found faithful when our Lord returns in his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth, with the fruits of our honest labors, and with a kind and generous heart. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices, along with the tithes and offerings that we bring, as part of our gratitude and thanksgiving. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of the poor, that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, Hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Bless your word wherever that word is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace to convert those not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. May your word pass from our ears to our hearts, from our hearts to our lips, and from our lips to our lives, that your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen.
He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. At this time, we will conclude our service by singing our final hymn, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. That's hymn number 606. Just a friendly reminder that Beautiful Savior continues to have live classes via Zoom, Bible classes on Sunday morning at 9.30. We invite you to join us. Uh, there has been a link sent out via email, so please click on that and follow that and join us uh, for some time spent, some well time spent in God's Word. Yeah. 